for this video on imaginary numbers, I'd like to cover a couple more concepts that often come up in reference to these numbers. So one of them would be, how do we deal with the square root of something like minus 25? Since we know the square root of negative one is i, but what is this square root equal to? So this problem we'll deal with, as well as dealing with what happens if I square i, or what happens if I raise i to something like the fifth power or the 17th power? You know, what are these equal to? So we're talking about powers of imaginary numbers and simplifying square roots of imaginary numbers. So let's start with this one first. So we have the square root of minus 25. And when you have square roots in general, you can break them up into a product of square roots. So for instance, if I had three times two inside the square root, I could break this up into the square root of three times the square root of two. So I can do the same idea here and break this up into the square root of minus one times the square root of 25. And then the square root of minus one we know is i, since that's what we defined it as. So we have i, and then the square root of 25 is five. So we have i times five, which is generally written as five i. And this is something we can test because essentially what this is saying is that if we multiply 5i by itself, we'll get back minus 25. So let's try that. So we have 5i times 5i. And we know that with multiplication, we can rearrange the order. So we can do 5 times 5, which is 25. And then we have i times i, which is i squared. So that essentially leads us to this question here, what is i squared? And since we know i is the square root of minus 1, and if we square that, basically what happens is that a square root and a square are inverse operations of each other. So they essentially cancel each other out. And you can think about it with a simpler example. Like if we had the square root of nine and I square this, what you'll see is that you'll just get back this nine. So let's first take the square root first. Square root of nine is three. And then we square that and we get nine. So you can see that square roots and squares just cancel each other out. So it'd be the same thing here, the square root and square cancel, and you just get what's left on the inside, which is minus one. So this i squared we know is negative one. So we'd have negative one times 25, which is minus 25, which is exactly what we we're looking to get. So it is true that five i is the square root of negative 25. So let's now look at a second example. Let's do the square root of minus 81. And so this, like the previous one, we can break this up into a product of square roots. We have the square root of minus one times the square root of 81. Square root of minus one is i, and the square root of 81 is nine. So this is nine i. And again, we can test this by just remultiplying it out. Nine times nine is 81. And then we have i times i, which is i squared. But we know from above that i squared is negative 1. So this would simplify to minus 81, which is exactly what we expected. So 9i is the square root of minus 81. And you could have a scenario like the square root of minus 80, where it doesn't have a nice clean square root. So we're going to follow the same process, essentially pulling out that square root of negative 1, or that i. And so we have i times the square root of 80. And at this point, it's just a question of how do we simplify the square root of 80. And usually what I do with these is just make a tree. So with 80, I will ask what two numbers multiply to give me 80. And it could be any two numbers. Let's do 8 and 10. And then I just repeat the process for each of these numbers. So 2 and 4 make 8. And two is a prime number, so that is essentially the end of that branch. And four is a product of two and two, while 10 is a product of five and two. So once I write all this down, I essentially go to all of the ends of the branches and I circle them just to remind myself what 80 is composed of. And I'll rewrite this as 80 is two times two times two times two. So that's two to the fourth and then times five. And with this in mind, we can rewrite the square root of 80 as 
i times the square root of 2 to the 4th times 5, since this is equal to 80. So we have 2 to the 4th times 5, 5. And essentially, I'm going to write this out in multiple steps. But essentially, what we want to do is break up this product into perfect squares. So what I mean by that is that if we have 2 to the 4th, we can rewrite this as 2 squared times 2 squared. So we're breaking it up into things that are squared. And the reason is because if we square root something that's squared, they cancel out and we just get left with the thing on the inside. So let me rewrite this now as i times the square root of 2 squared times 2 squared times 5. And we can break this up since it's a product on the inside. We can break it up into a product of square roots. And once written like this, it might be a little bit clearer how to simplify this. So at this point, we just look at each of these, the square root of 2 squared. And we know that square roots and squares cancel each other out. So this would just be 2. This would just simplify to 2. So we would have i times 2 times 2 times the square root of 5. And rewriting this is 4. We have 4i times the square root of 5. So we just figured out that the square root of minus 80 is 4i times the square root of 5. And if you really want, you can re-multiply this out as a test, 4i root 5 times 4i root 5, and see that it does indeed equal minus 80. The i squareds combine to give us our negative, and then root 5 times root 5 is 5, and then times 4 is 20, and times 4 again gives us 2 minus 80. So that would be the correct answer. And to finish this video off, let's just talk about the different powers of i. So we know that i is the square root of minus 1. i squared, we found out, was minus 1. But what is i cubed? And to answer this question, it might be easiest to break this up using the rules of exponents. So we could rewrite this as i squared times i because essentially this is the same thing as three i's multiplied together, just like over here. And then we know i squared is negative one. So this just becomes minus i. And i can't be simplified any further, so i cubed is simply equal to minus i. And then i to the fourth, we could rewrite as i squared times i squared. So we have negative one times negative one, which would be positive one. So i to the fourth is just one. And if we continue, i to the fifth, well, that's just i to the fourth times i. And i to the fourth is one, so this is just i. And what you'll notice is that every four powers of i, the cycle will repeat. So the next one, i to the sixth, that's just i to the fourth times i squared i to the fourth is one, i squared is negative one, so this is just negative one. So notice that i squared and i to the sixth have the same answer. i and i to the fifth have the same answer. i to the seventh, you'll see, will have the same answer as i cubed because we can essentially pull that out from i to the fourth. Sorry, that should be a three there. And then i to the fourth is one, i cubed we know is minus i, so this is just minus i. And i to the eighth to complete the cycle is just i to the fourth times i to the fourth, which is one times one, or just simply one. So if you see a question asking, let's say i to the 22nd power, you first want to figure out how many multiples of four go into this. And namely, four goes into 22 five whole times with two left over. So we would have i to the fourth, and there's five of those, times by i squared, since that's what's left. And always check this using your exponent rules. This would be i to the 20th. We An exponent to an exponent, you multiply. And then i to the 20th times i squared is i to the 22. And we know this i to the fourth is 1, and 1 to the fifth power is 1. So this just becomes i squared, and i squared is negative 1. So that would be your final answer. So i to the 22nd is simply negative 1. And real quick, if we do one final example, i to the, let's say, 74th power. Here again, how many times does 4 go into 74 
or how many whole times does 4 go into 74? And it goes into 72 evenly, so there would just be an i squared left over. So 4 times 18 is 72, and then you would have 2 left over. This is just going to be 1 times i squared, which is negative 1. So i to the 74th is minus 1.